as we know that engineering mechanics is one of the engineering subject so widely we are using to find out the what are the external forces are acting on that system but and we are going to be finding the, the resultant component because of those forces but we never find out what are the the resistance forces are developing within that system so with that combination here i'm going to try to using one of the the method which is using to find out the external forces acting on that system so that method here is going to be the parallel ground law so this parallel ground law how it is going to be helpful to find out the resultant component while acting on that particular system as we know when there is going to be a two forces are going to be acting on the system and they are going to be the point of application is going to be the same and then we are going to be using this parallelogram method and to find out the resultant component. So here, in the first we will see the, the statement of that particular parallelogram law. So if two forces acting at a point are represented in magnitude and the direction by the adjacent sides of the parallelogram, then the diagonal passing through the, the point of intersection represents the, the resultant in both magnitude as well as in the direction so particularly this parallelogram law we are using particularly for the when two forces are going to be acting when the number of forces are going to be more is there so it is very difficult to use this kind of the methods so in this one i'm going to be say when the two forces are going to be acting at a point so this point is going to be existed on a particular rigid body and these two forces i'm going to be show as the magnitude and the direction as the adjacent sides of the parallelogram right and once i'm going to be using these are going to be adjacent suppose these are the one force is going to be acting this side another force is going to be acting this side so one force i'm going to be say the p another force is going to be the q so these are the the two forces acting on a, a rigid body right in the rigid body so then what will happen then the diagonal is passing through their point of intersection represents the resultant so that means so the component may not be move in the direction of the p direction that means the force direction and not in this direction of the force so then which direction that component will move so that component will move in the resultant directions that i am going to be say the r right that means the component forces because of the p and the force because of the q because they are going to be trying to pull in the two different directions but that component that the rigid body is going to be move in the resultant direction then which direction it will go that's what i am saying here the diagonal the diagonal is passing through their point of intersection so here can you see the force p and the force q the both are going to be moving to the point of so they are at the same point and this resultant is moving to the point of intersection so and the result is in the both the magnitude as well as in the direction now we are going to try to derive this equation by the analytically so that we can identify what is the resultant component in in terms of mathematically so here i have taken the rigid body and i'm showing here the two forces are going to be acting at a point on the rigid body that's point i'm going to be saying the wall so when the point is bow is subjected to the the two forces that's going to be the p as well as the q and that's representing in terms of the magnitude is going to be the, this is the length okay that the direction also we do shown in the vector form so the p and q then the already we told the resultant is passing to the the diagonal the, the passing to the intersection of the two forces p as well as the q that's going to be here that's shown with the represent r we don't know exactly what is the magnitude and what is the inclination with it is making with the horizontal plane so now i want to try to find out that equation over here for this one i'm going to be draw a separate uh, the parallelogram uh, the diagram so that we are going to be find out that part so here this is going to be the point o and here the magnitude of the p is going to be the this is the length i have taken at the same time the q is going to be the the force is going to be acting at a point that is going to be the q so this point i'm going to be say the end that nearest to the arrowhead i'm going to be say so that's going to be the a right and here i'm going to be so in this case the diagonal i'm going to be taking passing through this part so then how could you complete the the triangle over there so then in this case i'm going to be taking the magnitude of the p at the top position here i'm going to show with the dots so this is going to be the your a and similarly i'm going to be taking the the q2 towards this side so then the diagonal i'm going to be drawing this 
So this is going to be your the representing. That is the resultant force. So then what I am going to do, I am going to be extending this line over here. So then I am going to be taking, this is the O, A, this is going to be the B and this is the C and I am taking the projection of the point C which is going to be intersecting the horizontal line of the OA extension that is going to be the D. So right, so now what I am going to do, I want to find out the resultant component analytically. So then what I am already we told that, that is going to be the angle between the, the force P and the Q is going to be the uh, theta and similarly the angle between A and the R is going to be the resultant component I am considering here is the alpha. So now we need to find out the alpha value. So that means what is the angle here between, in this case also we will get the only the, the theta. So this way we are going to be, the geometrical properties we are going to be identified and we had given here. So now how we are going to be calculating, as we know that, so when we are going to be taking the triangle, so here I am going to be taking the triangle O, C, D. If I am going to be taking the triangle here, O, C, D. So then what, what will happen here? So I am going to be taking, it is going to be representing the right angle triangle. So then, so I am going to be writing the Pythagoras theorem. That is going to be R square is equal to, that is, I am going to be writing, in this case, that is going to be O C square is equal to O D square plus C D square. Right? In, in this one, what is the O C? That is representing the magnitude of the word resultant component. That is I am going to be writing here is going to be the R square. Then what is the OD here? The OD I am going to be writing in terms of OA plus OD. OA plus OD whole square plus the CD I am going to be taking as it is CD square. So then what is OD? OA we know that that is going to be the, the magnitude of the force P. And do you know the CD and the OD? That's we need to find out. If I'm going to be taking the triangle here, so that's going to be sine theta. I'm going to be taking here the triangle ACD. In this triangle, what will happen? So when I'm going to be taking the sine theta, the sine theta means opposite side by diagonal here. So what is the opposite side here? That's going to be the CD divided by what is the diagonal here? That's going to be the AC. AC is representing your Q. So that's going to be your A C. The finally we need to find out the C D value. That C D is equal to what is the A C? A C is representing the, the magnitude of the force Q. The Q into sine theta. So now we got it. When I'm going to be taking the cos theta so that I can calculate the, the component of the A D. So when I'm going to be taking here the in the same cos theta. So that the cos theta is equal to what is the formula? It is sent by diagonal. H sent side is here in the AD by diagonal that is going to be AC. So then AD is equal to what is the formula? AC is equal to already we know that is going to be the Q and cos theta. So this way we have calculated by using this triangle what is the AD and what is the C. So if I am going to be substituting in this equation so that I can get it. So that's going to be the resultant component we can calculate from this. The R square is equal to OA is equal to what's the formula? That's going to be your magnitude of the P. Plus OD is equal to so what is the OD here? So now it's a OA plus AD square. Sorry. So that's AD is equal to how much? That's going to be Q cos theta whole square plus C D square. C D square is equal to Q sin theta whole square. So now we are going to be do the simplification from this equation. This is the resultant component that we need to find out. The R square is equal to, so this is going to be the P square plus Q square cos square theta plus 2 P Q cos theta plus Q square sin square theta. So in this case Q square cos square theta, q square, sin square theta. If I am going to be taking the q square is the common, there is going to be a sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1. So then simplifying this equation, r square is equal to p square plus q square plus 2pq cos theta. So from this equation, we can calculate the r value. When I am going to take this r square to the right side, then the same equation I am writing r is equal to the square root of p square plus q square plus 2pq cos theta. So then this way we can calculate the resultant component. 
So how could you calculate the alpha value? This is the angle which is making with respect to the horizontal surface. Once we calculated the resultant component, now I'm going to be trying to find out the, the inclination of that resultant component. So that I'm, for that, I'm going to be taking the tan alpha. The triangle I'm going to be taking OCD, the tan alpha is equal to, that's going to be opposite side by CD by OD I'm going to be taking. So as you know that, the CD is equal to, is available, that's going to be Q sin theta, so is the CD. And OD I'm going to be writing OA plus A. OA plus A. D, I have taken. So once I am going to be substituting these values in this equation, uh, what I am going to be getting here, the tan alpha is equal to CD is equal to Q sin theta divided by OA is equal to, that's the P, the magnitude of the force P plus Q cos theta. So this way we can calculate the alpha value when it is available the theta as well as the q and the p the two magnitude of the forces it must be known and the theta the inclination between the forces p and the q also must know then only we can calculate the alpha value so once we calculated the inclination that is the resultant component inclination now we are going to be see when this the r is the resultant component is going to be the maximum when it is the minimum that's we are going to be see here so then when it is going to be the maximum so when this theta is equal to 0, when theta is equal to 0 means what is the cos is equal to? Cos theta is equal to 1. So then if I am going to be substituting in this equation, so then what I am going to be getting here, that's going to be r is equal to, so that's going to be square root of p square plus 2 square 2pq 1. So we know this is the equation we do have that's going to be p square plus q square plus 2pq that's the formula is equal to a plus b whole square. So that I'm going to be taking here, the r is equal to the square root of p plus q whole square. Then finally, we are getting the p plus q. So then this value is the, the maximum resultant component that is equal to p plus q. So this way, we are going to be calculated. When this is going to be the maximum value, so then when the theta is equal to 0, in any question if they are mentioned, there is a, the maximum resultant component means we need to take this equation so that we can resolve that. When and the theta is equal to 180 degrees, so then what is this formula, how it is going to be getting? So we know that when the theta is equal to 180 degrees, so then what is the cos theta? So that we are going to be getting the cos theta is equal to minus 1 because the cos theta 90 plus 9, 90 plus 90, suppose if you are going to take then sin 90 is equal to we are getting because it is getting into the second quadrant then automatically we are getting this value is equal to minus 1. Then how we are going to be modifying this equation? The same value I am going to be substituting in this resultant component that is going to be r is equal to the square root of p square plus q square plus 2pq. Here the cos theta is there that I mentioned here is the minus 1. So from this one that is r is equal to the square root of p square plus q square minus 2pq. So as we know that this formula is equal to a minus b whole square formula. So then r is equal to p plus p minus q whole square. That's going to be the square root. Then finally I'm going to be getting p minus q. So this value we are going to be say the minimum is equal to p minus q. When we are going to say the maximum means that's going to be p plus q we are getting because the theta is equal to cos theta is equal to 1. But in this case, when the resultant component is going to be the minimum, then we substitute it, theta is equal to 180 degrees. So that we got it the p minus q. So after the derivation of this parallel ground resultant component, we have derived. And we, we have seen what is the maximum resultant component, what is the minimum resultant component and how it is going to be making the inclination with the horizontal surface. Now here we are going to be continuing with that with the one problem. See, so the two forces, he is telling that there is the two forces of 50 kN and 100 kN at a, at a point at an angle of 60 degrees, right, between them. Find the magnitude and the resultant of the A forces. So in this case, how many forces would you have? I'm going to be taking here, the force P is equal to 50 kilonewtons. And similarly, the Q is equal to 100 kilonewtons I have taken. So whatever the forces they given, I'm going to be considering the P and the Q because in our derivations, we used the P and the Q, the parameters. So that I'm going to be considering same as the P and the Q. And it is making an angle 
equal to 60 degrees. So this angle is going to be, I'm going to be considering between these two, that's going to be the 60 degrees. If I'm going to draw the diagram for this one, so I'm going to be getting like this. So one force is going to be the P force, another force is going to be the Q, it's making an angle theta. Right? The same figure we are going to be considered. So then we need to find out. So what do you want to calculate? I need to calculate the resultant component R, right? And inclination pi, we need to calculate it. So that's why, as for the definition, the resultant component is going to be passing through the intersection of these two forces. So this is going to be your resultant, and this is the alpha. On that basis, we are going to be calculating. How could you calculate the R value? As for the, the analytical method, the before derivation we have seen, that's R is equal to, what is the formula we do have? That's going to be square root of P square plus Q square plus 2PQ cos theta we do have. So then we know the P, Q and the theta, if I'm going to be substituting in this equation, I'm going to be substituting kilo newtons for these two parameters is going to be the same. Whatever the derivation we are going, coming from this one, it is also the same. That's why I'm going to be taking here, that's going to be R is equal to, P is equal to how much? That's going to be 50 into 10 to the power of 3 whole square plus 100 into 10 to the power of 3 whole square plus 2 into 50 into 10 to the power of 3 100 into 10 to the power of 3 that's into cos 60 degrees if you do the simplification from this equation so we are getting the r is equal to what's the component we are getting here that is is equal to 132 point 132 point 87 kilo newtons to indicate. So this is your the resultant component R is equal to 132.87 kilo newtons. So now the next one is that we need to calculate the alpha value. So how could you calculate the alpha value? We have the equation the tan alpha is equal to the Q sin theta by P plus Q cos theta. If you are using that equation then easily we can calculate the, that resultant component in relation with the horizontal. So here that we need to calculate the alpha is equal to how much? That's going to be tan alpha is equal to Q sin theta by P plus Q cos theta. So once we are going to be substituting here 100 into 10 to the power of 3 sin 60 degrees divided by P. P here is going to be how much? 50 into 10 to the power of 3 plus 100 10 to the power of 3 into cos 60 degrees. So then finally, alpha is equal to this tan is I'm going to be taking towards this side. So that I'm going to be getting the alpha. So the alpha is equal to after getting that part, that's we are getting 40.89 degrees. So that is the, the resultant component inclination we do have calculated. R value and alpha value we have calculated. So after the completion of the first problem, we are going for the second problem. In the second model, we are going to be seeing. See here, the two forces, he told that. There are the two forces equal to 2P and the P. So here, the magnitude of the uh, P and Q. The P, suppose you are going to take that is equal to 2P as for our, the derivation. And the Q is equal to P. Okay, act on a particle. These two forces are acting on a particle. If the first force the first case, the first two force be doubled and second force is increased to 12 kilo newtons. So in this case, what will happen? This is the first case. This is going to be the force is going to be acting. In the second case, what will happen? That the first force is be doubled and the second force is going to be increased to 12 kilo newtons. So the direction of the resultant remains unchanged. The direction of this one, that means going to be the direction we, it is going to be unchanged when this is going to be direction is going to be unchanged that means that the angle is going to be remains constant that what is the angle here the resultant angle with respect to the horizontal surface that's going to be the alpha we have assumed that is going to be remains unchanged find the value of the p we need to calculate from this one the data is going to be the case one i'm going to say in the case one this is going to be the two forces are there the p is equal to 2p and the q is equal to P. Right? So, what are the next value we do have? In this case, the case 2, it is also given. 
so that's going to be case 2 is going to be so in this case the first force is going to be doubled here is going to be the 2p is there what is the doubled here that's going to be 4p the p is equal to 4p we are going to be getting the next one the q is equal to how much that's q is equal to it's increased by 12 kilo newtons that means already q is going to p is there so that is the magnitude of this one so then in the second case the q is equal to how much that's going to be p plus 12 we are getting kilo newtons we are getting i am not taking the kilo newtons i am keeping as it is the uh, that part okay so then what is the value of so the p value we need to calculate so we need to calculate the p is equal to how much so then how could you calculate here so that we, the equations i am going to be taking here is the solution so first case if i am going to be draw the graphically what is the e, the diagram we are going to be getting in this case so this is going to be your 2p and this is going to be your p and the resultant component is going to be this one and it is making an angle alpha right and similarly in this case what will happen the same the p is going to be here it is the double that's going to be the 4p we are getting and this is we are getting the p plus 12 we are getting so this is going to be the resultant component r so here also the direction cannot be changed here that's going to be the condition is going to be the alpha dash which also i'm going to take this alpha alpha dash is going to be the same so that we can calculate the value of that p so once you drawn this one we know that the direction of the resultant component is not changed from this one the tan alpha is equal to what's the formula we do have that's going to be q sin theta by p plus q cos theta we do have so here is going to be the q sin theta that means here is going to be the p p sin theta divided by 2p plus p cos theta so i do have this equation then in the second case that's going to be the tan alpha square so that is going to be tan alpha dash that is equal to we do have q sin theta that's going to be here q means p plus 12 sin theta divided by so that's going to be 4p that's going to be the p plus q cos theta here p plus 12 cos theta as we know that this inclination cannot be changed because the direction is going to be the same that's going to be alpha is equal to alpha dash right so from this one i'm going to be simplifying this one the p sine theta divided by 2p plus p cos theta that's equal to p plus 12 sin theta divided by 4p plus p plus 12 cos theta so in this case what will happen the sin theta sin theta i'm going to be cancelled out because the same magnitude then i'm going to be reshuffling to left hand side and to the right hand side so then what is the equation we are getting from this one so that is going to be your p into 4p plus p plus 12 cos theta right that is equal to p plus 12 2p plus p cos theta and i'm going to be simplifying this equation and so that i will get the the p value over here so how we are going to be getting the simplification so in this case the p i'm going to be multiplying with all these terminologies so that's i'm going to be getting here so so that's going to be 4p square plus p square plus 4p square cos theta plus 12p cos theta 12p cos theta that is equal to and i'm going to be multiplying here with the p here that's i'm going to be getting 2p square 2p square plus p square cos theta one we are going to be multiplying with the p then i am going to be multiplying with the 12 so then plus 24p plus 12p cos theta so once we are getting this equation and i am going to be further simplifying so that we can get the p value 
So this is the equation we got it. So then what will happen here? The tall p cos theta, tall p cos theta will going to be cancelled because they are existed both sides of the equation. So then further simplification, what I'm going to be getting here, here is the 2p square and 4p square. Suppose if you take to the left side, this is going to be your, once again, 2p square plus here, p square cos theta, p square cos theta we do have. So then I'm going to be cancelled this p square cos theta, p square cos theta. So then what, what, what is available here? That's going to be 24p is available. That's going to be minus, that's, that I'm going to be keeping the same side, 24p. Alright? So once it is going to be, so from this one, the p square and the p, then finally, what we are getting in this equation, so that's going to be 2p square minus 24p is equal to 0. Then once we are going to be substituting the values of here, the p square p value and these values, suppose if I am going to be taking the sum, uh, randomly I am going to be taking the trial and error methods, if I am going to be put the p is equal to 0, so that means the final output must be, is going to be the same here. So then how much we are getting here? That's going to be p square is going to be 0, this is going to be 0. The value of the p is equal to, we are getting the uh, p is equal to 1 value is going to be the 0. The second value what we are going to get it, you are substituting the p is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then finally I got it that p is equal to 6. If I am going to be substituting the p is equal to 6, then what will happen here? The 2 into, so this is going to be 36. So 36 into 2 minus 24 into 6. So then finally we are getting the p is equal to 0 and and the p is equal to 6. These two values are uh, the making this 2p square minus 24p is equal to 0. So then only we will get the p and the p values of this part. So that means the two conditions we do have, one is going to be for this condition, the second is going to be this condition. By using these two conditions, we got the p value either 0 or 6, the kilo newtons we are going to be getting. So here we will find another, the third problem regarding the parallelogram law. So in this case, the first one, the greatest and the least resultant of the two forces are 70 kN and 3 kN. So in this case, the greatest and the least resultant we have given. It means that R max he has given, so R max is equal to 17 kN. Similarly, R minimum is equal to 3 kN he has given, right? Determine the angle between the two forces. When the, the resultant is the square root of 149. So in this case, the third point he has given, we need to calculate theta is equal to how much when the r is equal to the square root of 149. So if I am going to be calculate the, what is the r is equal to the finally, that r is equal to the square root of p square plus q square plus 2 p q cos theta, right? From that we need to calculate. If you want to calculate that one, we need to find out the p as well as the q values. So how could you calculate that the p and the q values? This is the given data he has given. So then r max is equal to what is the formula we do have? When the r maximum we are getting, when the p plus q is equal to r max, right? And similarly, so r max is equal to p plus q. And similarly, r minimum, when we are getting the resultant component, the minimum, that's going to be r minimum is equal to, that's going to be p minus q, we got it. So we know r max value, we know r minimum value. That's going to be 17 kilonewtons as well as the 3 kilonewtons. Once if I'm going to be substituting this equation, it means that two equations, two unknowns easily we can calculate. That's going to be p plus q is equal to 17 kilonewtons P minus Q is equal to 3 kilonewtons we do have. So when we are going to be taking, this is going to be cancelled out and this is going to be the 2P. So then this is going to be your 20. Then P is equal to 10 kilonewtons we got it. So one, once I am going, uh, going to be substituting in this equation, either the equation 1 or equation 2, anything we are going to be getting. Suppose if I am going to be substituting in the equation 2. So then what I am going to be getting here, that's the Q is equal to so here the 10 minus 10 that is that side that is going to be 10 here suppose if it goes to that side so then we are getting the 7 kilonewtons so once we got it the p value and the q value so then we can calculate the theta value easily the third part is that we need to find out the theta so how would you calculate when the r is equal to the square root of p square plus q square plus 2p q cos theta we do have. So in this case what will happen? The r value has mentioned that is going to be the square root of 149. So if I am going to be substituting p, q, 
right and r value so that i can calculate the theta so in this equation that's going to be square root of 149 that is equal to the square root of here the p is equal to i'm going to be taking here 10 kilo newtons plus whole square this is going to be 7 into 10 to the power of 3 whole square plus 2 into p is equal to how much 10 into 10 to the power of 3 7 into 10 to the power of 3 cos theta so if you are going to be simplifying this equation then we will get the theta is equal to how much we are getting the theta here that is equal to 90 degrees we will get it so after the simplification of this equation then the finally theta is equal to 90 degrees we got it here suppose you are going to be taking this one so it is going to be representing this is the p this is the q the resultant component is going to be somewhere here that is going to be the r the angle between this theta is equal to 90 and it is going to be the alpha. 